guys winter is upon us we've got a lot of work to do inside this year don't we definitely if you guys remember last year we started some really big projects mainly the pod racers and our 20 foot b17 during this time of the year main reason is is because it's too cold to fly we got some big things in store for this year yeah um we've got everything from what an iron vulture to yep. uh hovercraft and uh we're gonna tackle things a little different this year definitely dave and i are gonna divide and conquer here we both have some passion projects ever since we were little kids that we want to take on we're gonna go ahead and do that for you and you guys get to follow along over the next couple months. Yeah, so stay tuned in for all this fun stuff and we'll have more too. We got work to do. All right, so for the Iron Vulture project, typically what we do with really big builds is we start off in small scale and then we create it, get success to it, and then we build it in large scale. The problem is that when you get large, especially with a multi-rotor that's very long and very skinny, you have problems. And if you guys remember our Zeppelin episode where we built a Zeppelin to celebrate our SE5 and our triplane, we had exactly that problem. So we had moments of incredible success. <laughs> and then moments of absolute chaos. Taking what we've learned from that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit different approach and I'm gonna build basically an analog of the airframe. In other words, I'm gonna build all the electronics and put all the motors, which is 12 vertical motors and two horizontal motors, and I'm gonna put those together and I'm gonna use multiple control boards to give me hopefully what it will be is a flying battleship experience. That means no pitching forward and rolling forward. That means it's gonna literally rise horizontally, move horizontally, and then turn horizontally. To do this with multiple control boards, I'm gonna have one control board controlling the eight center motors. I'm gonna have the second control board controlling the motors on the stern and on the bow. This will hopefully give me the ability to turn it much like you'd see a real battleship turning, but also give us the ability to keep the iron vulture flat at all times. This design is gonna to have to be incredibly light and incredibly well thought out. So we're gonna to try to keep as skill as possible, but also where some things where maybe fantasy and reality clash, we're gonna to try to find ways to overcome that where it won't take away from the original design. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna design this analog. We're gonna get this building. This will tell us how much weight we can lift, what kind of motors we need to use, and ultimately the tune we need to have. And we're gonna take you along the whole time. We have a lot of designing to do, we have a lot of wiring to do, and a lot of building to do. So currently, we're just uh, doing some prototyping to see what's gonna work for our hovercraft. And I kind of came up with a simple like air duct system that Mike's putting together. And we're just gonna use one of our old BDFs just for uh, testing purposes to see if it'll have enough thrust to uh, lift it off the ground. So while David's working on this, Stefan just came in. Our good friends is work. Yes! Is this? These are all the good things. Is this the heavy one? That's the heavy one. All right, I wanna take the heavy one. You take the light one. Okay. <laughs> So this is really exciting. Obviously we do everything in small scale, but the end goal of this is to make a hovercraft that is not a gimmick. We can literally use regularly and that will, will last a long time. Uh, Zor stepped up in a big way and they think they have motors just for the job and also some props. I always thought that Zor was like uh, props only. They're, they're definitely not that. They got a whole bunch of stuff. Props, motors, ESCs, thing, thing, things. It's like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. No, I like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we could throw it on the thing. I don't think that's probably that's eight probably grams. Probably register. <laughs> yeah. So the motors that are going to power these are going to be these monsters right here. We don't need a lot of speed, but we need a lot of thrust. And these guys, uh, 100 kV. I think was it 12s? Yeah, 12s. Yeah. This, this it's almost like all weather. Here. You see that? I, I can't wait to get this thing working and you know, winter's almost here. It's gonna be a lot of fun to play around in edge water with so, hovercraft. You know, nor normally we have to take, during, when it's like snowy, we have to take the car all the way around edge water. We can't drive to the driving range. We could just jump in the hovercraft and be like, <laughs> to the battery, to do. Hey, when you design the big one, make sure you put a little basket in it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that one's even prettier. It's like a doll finish. All right, so we got a lot of work to do. Uh, obviously, we're going to be finding some fun ways to test out the power of this. Uh, Dave's going to get this in small scale. And then once you find that out perfected, then we go big, right? Yeah, yeah we're going to upscale it a lot. All right, guys. Obviously, I'm here at my house. Dave's back at the shop messing around with his awesome hovercraft. I'm here because today's sponsor of this episode is our friends over at Bear Mattress. All right, so if you've never heard of Bear Mattress before, they're a company that offers premium mattresses that not only upgrade your sleep, your overall style of life, uh, your quality of life, but also they ship the mattress directly to your door for free. 
so I think the coolest thing about Bear Mattress is actually they have this sleep quiz that you take. It essentially matches you to the perfect type of mattress based on your preferences, your sleeping habits, etc. All right, so after taking the quiz, I was actually paired with the Elite Hybrid Bear Mattress, and I also got to choose the density of the mattress, which ended up being the medium firmness. So one of the big things I look at are like a bunch of reviews and all that kind of stuff. Well, obviously this has a great review, not only the firmness and how it works with your body, but also one of the things that I really loved about it was I get hot at night and they have this cooling technology. It's fantastic. So it's pretty simple. They ship it directly to your door for free. You get the box, you open the box, you unroll the mattress, and then you cut it out of the packaging and it goes, fills up, fluffs up, and it's ready to go. Also, when you're making a mattress purchase, you're kind of like worried, like, oh, am I gonna like this, am I not? Well, they have a 120 night sleep guarantee that if you're not liking it over that period of time, you can just ship it on back. Along with that sleep trial, you also have a lifetime warranty guarantee as well as financing available and flexible payment plans. So once again, huge thanks to Bear Mattress for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you check out the link in the description below or go to bearmattress.com and put in the code that's in the description to get 30% off your mattress purchase. All right, so now I gotta go check on Dave, make sure that everything's going all right with this hovercraft, because they seem like they're having a lot of fun. So Dave, what are you doing? Right now, I'm currently putting our uh, uh, vent holes in our airbag here. And what this allows it to do is, uh, when air comes out of the inside cavity here, it's gonna float underneath of the bags and give it a cushion of air to float on. All right, so it's a moment of truth. We just put our air holes in the bottom. I'm gonna try it out and see what it does. So, yeah, you and I were talking about it. We don't know if it'll work or not, but we're thinking about trying like differential with two motors in the back to push it for steering and kind of having them at an angle. And if you do that, our thought is if we have them like this, going forward, it's gonna push them the same, so we'll still have the same amount of thrust. But when this one would accelerate, it would push it like that to steer. And then we wouldn't have to have any like linkages or anything for steering. You can also drift pretty well too. Right. Well, it's a hovercraft. They do what they want pretty much. <laughs> strong too. This, yeah, it looks strong. I think that's stronger than if we would have used plywood. Probably. You know, definitely a lot lighter. So, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's wire up the uh, ESCs. We'll get the center ones wired up to the receiver, and then the other four wired up to the control board. Cool. All right. I just before we take it outside, I just want to see. You, you can tell a lot by when things hop in the air and kind of how it runs away. And one good thing we have going for us is it's not like this thing can oscillate itself out of control because the majority of the lifting is just on throttle. So all I want to see is will it lift up? Is the gyro going to be enough to be able to make it stable? I just kind of want to make it light at first to see what it does, and then we'll know if we have to brace it. Terrible actor. <laughs> All right, guys, you ready? Oh, are we doing that? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing stuff right now? Yeah. I'm going to stand back. <laughs> <laughs> you guys realize, like, I'm not going to hit myself. You're all over there. Yeah, but there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, the H is getting right there. It's good. Although I didn't feel that move. Oh! All right, back up. Are you ready? Okay. Are you going behind me? <laughs> over here, I got it. All right, motor's on. But I want to check the tune out first because I think a lot of the waste could be in the tune. And then also, if you notice here, like the the motors here are way behind. See that? But I think if the motors are behind, the stability will be first. The motors will be second. So we'll give it a shot. All right. <laughs> so we got our first test. We're trying differential thrust on this thing. So let's see what happens here. Right it does work. work. 
really hard to control. <laughs> but it is working. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Why is this so fun? So we wanted to try something new, as I mentioned earlier. We wanted to take the outer four motors of the Iron Vulture and control it through our JHE 411 board um, on our Guardian. And that would hopefully give us the ability to control as a quadcopter while out in the center eight give us the thrust. It did work, we got some hovering off of it, but it just wasn't stable enough in what we needed it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside. I'm gonna order a KK2 board, which is a classic old school board, which doesn't require a computer to program it, but better yet, it can serve up to eight conventional motors. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna need to have happen. While we're waiting on that order to come in, uh, we got the idea here that we wanna combine two of our classic gremlins. Uh, this is our classic Guardian here. It runs off of two cells. It's awesome indoors and outdoors. This is our Hemiana Grammy. We raced a Ford Lightning against this and we won. Now the main goal is pretty simple on this. This extra power is gonna give this little Guardian the ability to carry like a 1RS or Insta360 go to. But with all that power, if I hit anything, this Delrin frame simply wouldn't hold together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this design to PCB Way and we're gonna have some prototype frames made out of carbon fiber sent back to us. This is gonna give us the ability to have the exact same Ford factor as the Guardian, but all the structural reliability of carbon fiber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and send PCB Way the files to cut this out. We should have this back in a week or two. We can assemble it, put it to the test. All right, so Josh and Mike are working on their project. Me and Noah are gonna go out and have some fun with this thing and tear up the runway and maybe even the pond. Let's see what happens. What are you doing? I'm gonna go play with a hovercraft. Sweet. You wanna try it? I don't think you could wreck it. You I, might I, be able to wreck it. I wanna ride in it. Uh, I think we need a bigger version of that. What are you trying to say, David? That's not nice. Quite the obvious. <laughs> I, I can make some skateboard or skates. Ah! There's quite a bit of water in the creek. We could possibly try a creek run. <laughs> we'll see how it goes out here on the runway first. See, this kind of works out good because we just got done replacing the runway. There's some nice dirt down here at the end, so. It'll give us uh, some practice in the dirt and on a nice smooth surface. See if it'll work on both. Maybe even try the grass. I think that's a success. Oh, it doesn't have quite enough power for the grass. Well, I consider that a big success. If we can make our big one do anything like this, it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys want to go try some water? Let's do it. Not a lot of water in our creek right now. It's been a pretty dry summer. Maybe down here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this winter, I see us driving around a giant one of these. I think, I think we're going to have new transportation down to manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right here looks like a good spot. <laughs> and I hit a rock. Oh, I think I might have ripped my bag. It's going down! Oh, come back! <laughs> now I just filled up the water. <laughs> okay, most of the water's out. Well, that worked out pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, gyros on or the self leveling off for now. All right, we're just gonna start with a turn it on. You guys clear? Yeah! That's a lot better. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> it is 
terrifying. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so this is probably one of the most productive weeks we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, this was a complete success, but I think I'm gonna go in a different direction. A um, couple of secrets that uh, came up with that we're gonna try out. Can't wait to show you guys. And the iron vulture, we got it hovering, but we are far from done. We need to make this thing go forward, backward. We also want to get this outside as we tune it and put it up for a maiden flight there. Then we're on to the weight testing and the skeleton. So make sure you smash down the subscribe button because we are far from done and we have a lot of other cool projects up our sleeve. You guys take care. We'll see you next see time. You next time.